another edition of I Am My Brother's Keeper of the Garage Apartment. I am the Funky Militant Hadar Jones. And as always, I got the tribe with me to let the people know who you are. My middle in this piece. Mac, back better than ever. Yes, indeed. And we a man down. Normally we have our boy Mar, but he ain't with us right now. I don't know. Maybe he'll join us a little later. But uh, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our website, thegarageapt.com. So, of course, y'all know here on I Am My Brother's Keeper, we are trying to debunk the idea that all blacks are inherently criminal. Um, so here we have candid conversations about what needs to be done to uh to move our progress forward. Um, with us tonight, we got a young brother who, who I go a ways back with, went to school with, family, got family ties with, um, doing great things in the community. Um, and, 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 and it's one of the reasons I won't say fuck the police. <laughs> got a HPD officer, also founder of the Third Good Deeds Foundation, Officer Sheldon Thurgood. Welcome to the Garage Apartment, man. Appreciate you having me. Appreciate you guys having me. Absolutely, man. So, yeah, like I was saying, so we try to highlight uh, young brothers and sisters who are doing great things in the community, and we also try to talk about what needs to be done. We just started saying we're going to have candid conversations, man, and we're going to bring folks who are out here in the front lines, and we're going to make it happen. So I definitely wanted to talk to you because, uh, like I said, you're one of the good guys, man, and you out here in the front lines, and you out here battling, and you have a viewpoint and a vantage point that none of us have. So um, you were out here in the front lines, um during the protest. So tell us tell us what you experienced patrolling during the protest. Well we during the protest our well our position wasn't really I think everybody had certain everybody had certain positions. So everybody wasn't out at the protest, I should say you know, I should say. You might have some officers they wanted over here. Uh, make sure nobody comes on this end or, you know, just in case you will have some people on that end. And then you will have a specialized uh, force that will actually be there on the front line of the protest. So, one, I mean, one night, uh, well, I mean, me and one of my partners had just went, you know, let's just go around and see if we can, if there's any need or we can help out, uh, you know, doing the deal or whatever. And I think it was on the Saturday, man, and that was really when, you know, we was falling back and we were seeing everything. This, you know, it's something new to me. And I was just seeing, uh, you know, a lot of officers and, and a lot of people protesting. They was just getting there, you know, their, their emotions was coming out, man, the way they was feeling, you know, you know, talking about other officers that was on the front line. And, and all of a sudden, man, we just so happened to be put in into the front line. I think somebody had it was a gap, and I think we we was just like let's help out. Let's just let's just go there so we can be help you know helping out our team. And it was it was just you know just just seeing it. I guess just being there, hearing the frustrations, and hearing you know this this new to me, man. I I never experienced this before. So you know hearing seeing all the people and, and, and hearing their frustrations and and understanding, you know, their frustrations and, you know, being there in the midst of it, it really, I, I mean, it just really, you know, it, it hurt. It was just wishing I was something, it was something I could do to kind of like save, you know, me try to save this whole, this whole thing that's going on. But at the time, it's just nothing I could do but just sit there and listen to it. Absolutely, man. So, so George Floyd, George was one of us, man. You know, you, you, you 
you you a graduate of, of Yates High School. You and I from Yates High School. He was from the same neighborhood. He was a lion. You know, we share that commonality. So, did that connection affect you when you learned about his death? Like, cause, because, of course, anytime you see uh, uh, such a brutal death, it's always it always affects you. But this was somebody we knew. What I mean by that, like this was close to home. This was somebody that we had a connection. It impacted me more because I, I went to school with some of his family. So like I know I didn't know him personally, but I knew of him. So did that connection did that affect you when you learned about his death and how did how did it impact? Cutting off on me. Um, how how did it impact me? Basically, because um, I I didn't. Um, t my dad brought it up to me how I knew him, man. Because when I was little, we used to go and actually watch him that state team play. You know, my dad never missed a Yates game. So when I was little, we would always go to those games and see those great players play. Um, and that team was something special until now. My dad was like, you know, man, that's boom. That was the team we went and, 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 you know, basically saw, we saw him. You know, he was one of the the, the, the greatest, you know, greatest wide receivers of that team. And I have friends that actually played with him, my man Brady Bob, and the way he talked about him. But to know that, you know, that guy done, you know, expressed during his videos, I didn't know him personally, but but through, during his videos, I had a lot of people that stayed in the CUNY homes, a lot of my friends, a lot of my teammates that played for Yates. Um, so, yeah, of course, if it, if it hit those guys, it hits me because we always was taught um, on the team that we are a family no matter what. You know, um, and what I love about Yates, it was always a great tradition. No matter if you ain't even knew that person, but you know he from the yard, you know, J.Y., that was family. And people was going to come from anywhere out of Jack Yates and support and be there because that person was, you know, came out of uh, out of JY. And it, it really affected me. I mean, you know, he done so much, you know, community-wise. He His videos really inspired me just by looking at his videos. He seemed the type of person that I, that I do. That's what I do. I'm always a community person that's always trying to do something better for the community. So it did hit hit me, you know. The impact hit really hard, and at the time I was like, you know, if it's anything I could do, um, you know, I called up my man, you know, Trey, Trey the Truth, and try to see if it's something I can do with him and and be that that person to uh, to be there for him and be there for the family. Okay, absolutely, man. Well, Speaking of community, uh, just a little background on yourself. How long have you been on the force? Man, I just made 10 last month. <laughs> okay, so 10 years, 10 years. Congratulations, man. I'm glad you made it that long. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, a few episodes uh, ago, we, we've been talking about community and how a lot of our resources or infrastructure has gotten away from the community. A lot of stuff has been outsourced. Uh, my question is, can you, are you able to tell our, our, our audience how uh, officers are picked to be put in certain community patrols? Is it a is it like a, a random draft thing, or is is it something that they, uh, as soon as they get on the force, they like, oh, we need really help here, and you got to go here, or is it something that people uh, ask me, like, I I would like to be on this side of town. Can you put me on this side? Nah, every every community has a a, a, a station. Uh, uh. So if you're on the northeast side, you have the northeast station. You know what I'm saying? If you're on the north side of Acres Home, you got the north station. If you're on southeast Macau, uh, what is it, southeast? That's the southeast station. Third Ward is more south central. 
um, Central downtown and Central Station. So every 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 area has a station. So if I was to go to Southeast um, Station, then that's what area I'm gonna be patrolling, no matter what color I am or not. I'm gonna be in that area. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's not no, it's not a pick to well let me. It's you know a supervisor say, well no, you you go to this station. No, it's wherever you. Wherever you, you you're you transfer to or whatever your your class or 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 you end up in whatever station you're at, it don't matter what ethnicity it is, is that's where you're gonna be patrolling it. So it's not no no you and this this is a all African American station so uh, area so Sheldon, I need you over here. Or this is Clear Lake, so this Caucasian officer, I need you over there. No, it, it's it's not like that. It's just that you're wherever area you in, what station you in, that's where you're going, that's where you're patrolling. It's it's no weather. And so you, when you when you're when you're applying, you're applying to H P D as a whole or you're applying to a specific station when you start that mm -hmm. process? Nah, you, you apply from H P D. You don't know what station you're gonna be at. Okay, you so might, they just you, put you where they need you. You might for me, I'm from Acres Home, so I might say when I join a police force, I wanna patrol Acres Home. That's the North Station, but ain't no guarantee I'm gonna get that. You know, that's my that's why I want to be. I want to be at home. I didn't get that. I got clear light. <laughs> okay, so, so it's it's pretty much a random <laughs> draft of what station you're going to. I mean, well, it depends on how you how you score in class. I mean, it's okay. going from your your test scores and how you end up rating in class. You take okay. a test. So if you pass your test at a at a high score. Then you get to select first where you want to go. You know okay. what station you have options on stations to go to. I wasn't at the top, <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly. So I get what's left over. You feel me? Just just okay. being, just being no, right. No. That's that's great clarity. That's great clarity. Uh, now with you saying that you've been on the force for ten years, from your day one. Has the definition or your perception, well, let's, the definition of what you thought being a police officer, has it changed over those 10 years, uh, either in the, in the department or just even through your experience of the 10 year of your tenure of being a police officer? Well, I mean, me personally, I I came my 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 reason for coming in, in the police department could be totally different from other people's reasons why. You know, before I became an officer, I was working at a juvenile facility for four years. Okay. My thing was I wanted to see what I can do to prevent all these kids from coming back to the juvenile. I had a cousin that was coming into the juvenile office. Well, I worked in it. And he came not once, he came twice. I'm like, bro, what, what you, this ain't, what you doing? So my thing, my, my thing, not speaking for everybody else, me personally, I wanted to make a change. That's why I joined the police department because I wanted to be that change to see if I could stop that. At least I could be a help to stop all these kids from coming into the juvenile facility. I mean, I ain't gonna stop everybody, but if you can stop some, you did your part. You know what I'm saying? So when I did, God was fortunate enough to bless me to actually be a police officer, and then I was able to 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 from some years to go by to come out with my own nonprofit, Third Good Deeds. I was actually helping kids from everywhere, man, to stop that from happening. So that was that was actually my mission and my goal. As of right now, from 10 years, that's my mission and my goal. I've been doing since I started to stop these kids from getting into the system. You know what I'm saying? And I've, at the same time, through the crisis and everything we've been going through, I'm still doing what I was, my purpose of God having me to do. I'm still doing it. And I'm, I'm excited about it. But, yes, changes have been made, but it's it's. It's almost like I'm I'm hurt because I'm seeing a lot that's going on. 
But I know at the same time, I have a lot of kids that I inspire, that I'm role models to. So I can't be down and be giving up hope. You know how many kids that I that out of schools and alternative schools and and if y'all don't know me, I didn't done, done stuff that stepped out on faith and I I've been through so many schools of last year and the years before, and kids that you would never thought they would be police officers. After I spoke with them, everybody in there, man, hey, what's up? Oh, afterwards they're like, hey, I was a seat third good man. Hey, I'm I'm thinking about it. Kids that you would never think. You know what I'm saying? Because you inspired them after your your your, your talk with them. You right. inspired them after your speech. You inspired them after your swag, after your how you how you gathered your 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 love and your feelings for those kids. No matter what they'd have done, they wanted to be like you. Right. So right. I think the hardest part that I have right now is that all the kids that I did inspire, the things that they're going that's going on now their families, the, their movements and everything, I don't, I think mentality, I'm not there with them no more. So you know what they're thinking on when I'm not there and they're seeing all this stuff that's going on, they don't want to be a police officer no more. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I have. That's my challenge. You know, that's what really, really hurts me at this moment because I have to do whatever it takes to go back out there to let them know that our cops ain't bad cops. All right. Okay. And to pick, I'm, I, I'm sorry, but to piggyback on that question, that was a great answer. Love it. Um, did the depart, does the department give a definition of what they want police to be or policing to be? And has that changed over the 10 years you've been? in the police uh, force? No, we're really, man, when our chief, when we got a new chief, when the new chief that we have in now, he's more of a community policing chief. You know what I'm saying? He's a chief that actually wants to see community policing. So that was a change. Because uh, our last chief, he was, he was awesome. But this chief is more of community. I know y'all y'all seen our chief <laughs> our chief before. Yeah. And, you know, this chief runs oh, all. <laughs> this huh? chief runs this chief runs all. Chief, <laughs> chief run calls, chief be out there for protests, chief be everywhere. So he's more of a he's more of a community oriented chief. That's what he he loves that. He loves his you know, his officers to be out there doing great stuff in the community. So that's the biggest change that I've seen throughout the years of um when I first came in to the chief that we have now is um he's that's what he's about. Uh, we we have community policing units. You know what I'm saying? We have a division uh, a unit that actually does that. They go out in the streets, they go out in different schools, they go out everywhere you think of they go to and they serve the community. That's what they do. You know, so I, I'm proud of that, man. I'm really proud of our city because we have so much, um, so much as far as like you, you, if you're looking for mental health, we have a mental health team. I work with, I have a mental health uh, outreach worker that works for me. She's civilian. So while I'm working with homeless outreach, we're still working with the mental illness homeless. You know, we have a, a CERT team that actually helps crisis um, um, people in crisis that's, that's suffering from maybe if they, they're trying to commit suicide or they're, they're trying to harm themselves or they're trying to harm others. Well, we have a, a officer and a clinician that goes out and help those guys. I heard so that we want to, that's a rare, that's a, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I heard that that's really a rare thing too. I forgot what I was listening to, but they're saying that most of the department, very few of them will have. Is that you? I doubt that. Might have been, though, but just very few of them will have the, uh, like you say, the crisis team, and they will also have a community relations team as well as a mental health team. A lot of those just fall on those same patrolling cops and a lot of um, other departments, which they say adds to the stress. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I got a uh, question about you. You were were telling us prior to how you're in the uh, homeless patrol, uh, not patrol unit, what do you call it? 
Homicide uh, Homicide Homicide Homicide. Homicide. Uh, if you could just tell us again for the listeners now uh, a little bit about that, what you do, what that in, entails, and then I have a question following. All right, cool. See that, that, you, you see how big my smile got? <laughs> <laughs> I, I love that. Okay, so basically, <laughs> man, the homeless outreach team unit, what we do every day when we out there on the field is go out and we follow up with homeless people. It don't matter. You, you might see somebody on the side of the road, and you might say, well, hey, I think you might talk to this guy. Hey, is there anything you need to get help? Are you trying to get off the streets? And he says, yes. Or he says, I need help with my addictions. I have, I, I'm, I'm addicted to Kush. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we help with that. So you can say, well, hey, I got an officer. I got a friend, man, that... That can help you with that, get into rehab, get you off the streets, get you assessed for housing, get you the needs that you need met. You know what I'm saying? So I go out there and I meet with that that guy, that your friend, and, and I talk to him. I get to know him. I build that relationship with him. I tell him who I am and what I can do for him. You know what I'm saying? I see what, what type of insurance he has, if he's trying to get or pay for his own state. Or we have resources where um, awesome partners that can get them assessed for housing, that's fund them. They can get their own apartment, you know, depending on their, they got to meet this criteria. You got to see how long they've been homeless. They can't be homeless for two days and then they get an apartment. You know, it's got to be a whole question. Uh, they have to, you know, go through all these questions. You, you, you got to go through something. We got to get to know you. And, but with their friend. You know, we're there every day. We'll help them out. I say, I'll be like, man, I'll be here tomorrow if you need me. I'll come back tomorrow and talk to you and see if you're okay, if you need some, some shoes, if you need some pants. I got you. You know, so every day at work, that's what I do. I actually, it's just this homeless. We're for, we're for them. We're the police for them. You know what I'm saying? If anything they need. And let me tell you how, let me tell you how, how precious this is, man, how meaningful this is, you know. Have you ever seen an officer that drive through a neighborhood or whatever and you got all these people running to your vehicle? Have y'all seen that before? On TV. On TV? Honestly, the only time I've seen that, it wasn't no good situation. Well, this is a good situation. Southeast, they know my minivan. So they know that's me because I'm the only one I think in the city, even police officers like, what is that? I'm the only one that got that minivan. It's a transit. And it's got Houston police on it. It's like a ghost. It's like you, you have to look at it to really see it. But everybody know that's me. So they said that's Officer Thurgood. So they coming up. If I park, they run into the van. You know what I'm saying? And they either asking for help or they asking or they just checking on me to see how I'm doing. I'm coming to see how they doing, but they said how I'm doing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's 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 this is a this is a position that one of my coworkers said when we first started this. He asked me. He said, "Oh, he say third good. They call me T good in the department." He said, "Man, have you pinched yourself?" I'm like, "What are you talking about? Pinched myself for what? Have you pinched yourself like knowing this is for real? We getting paid to help people." Mm. And I said, you know what, bro? I said, you so right, man. This is a this is just an amazing this is an amazing call. But God God had his plan for me already. You know what I'm saying? It's it's a it's it, this is my this is my purpose, y'all. This is why I'm I'm not trying to get religious on y'all or nothing like that. Go go. Hey, do what you do. Do what you do. But everybody have a purpose in their life. And this is mine, whether it's the homeless or the, or the youth. Those are my two, just giving back, helping people. You know, that's just always been, these 10 years, that's all I've been doing. When I was on patrol, I was giving homeless clothes out of my patrol car. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, it was me patrolling, but I was having fun. 
You right. know, I, I make myself have fun. If I come on the traffic stop and I'm about to to just say like I go to a call, okay, let's go, let's be real. I'm on I'm on patrol and I go to a call of a a, a, a something prog in progress, and I see just for instance mm -hmm. I take a juvenile that was fighting somebody else. I'm more of a man. You know that saying, right? Man, you got a better life to do. You don't have to fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm that person that be speaking to this guy because I know he got a whole life ahead of him, and it's it only take this one uh but, uh one person, maybe me. That can inspire him to not fight no more and know and know that oh this officer man really touched my heart. And for that, I'm gonna do what's right. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, yeah. Hey. We 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 champion that type stuff, especially at the garage apartment. That's that's what we all about. We all promoting the the betterment of our people. Mm -hmm. Well the the follow up that I had was um, the fact that in the COVID-19 time, I was reading about how homeless people are being neglected originally, and then now there's a, 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 a actual push, an actual national push to try to look after the homeless people, to check on them, to get them tested, as well as the elderly and things like that. So I was just wondering if you saw did it adversely affect them in any sort of way that you could see? Um, how was that? Did that change the way you interacted with homeless people or were you were able to do your job in general, interacting with all people? Or how has that kind of changed your, your the way you do your job? Well, it, it, we, that, you know, it was tough. Because you, you got to understand, most of our homeless, they – if you ask them to go somewhere, if you want to put them, place them somewhere like shelters or something like that, or get them in that and out that out that position where they're in, they don't want to do it. You know, most of them are complacent. They they want what they have. You know, if there's tents, they gonna stay in that tent. That's their community. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to go nowhere. They now nah, we good right here. I was a good. I'm good. I'm I'm cool. And so we can't force them to, to you know, leave their camps or nothing like that. But we do want to be safe. And due to, due to like, a lot of the uh, our partnerships, we was able to provide them masks, hand sanitizer. Um, uh, well, we, we were asking. Now, we didn't have one of those, um, those, those deals to check and see if your fever is um, high or not. But we were asking, you know, how you feel. You know, if you are you sick or how, you know, I always talk to my homies, you know, they, you know, they're my people, man. I'll be like, man, how you feeling? Are you good? Yeah, I was a tea good, man. I'm, I'm, I ain't got no cause. I ain't, I already know, I already know the system. They already know what, what's going on. So some of them will say they okay. And, and we can just go by what they say. But as far as um, protecting those guys, we, we issue our masks. We issue our hand sanitizer. I mean, we did that daily to make sure they kept themselves safe um, and their peers and the peers that, you know, that, that's around them. Um, but we always had, if they did have an issue or a fever or if they wasn't feeling good and they go get, go to the hospital and, and come to find out that they might need to be quarantined, we had a facility for those those guys to actually, as of right now, they, they can go to to get quarantined until all that, you know, until they get better. That's a bit, and, 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 and I want to make it very clear that we are extremely proud of what you are doing, man. Uh, but we got to talk about the elephant in the room, bro. We got to get into some of that uncomfortable stuff, man. So, of course, um, What's leading the what's leading the news is of course police brutality, and 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 one of the reasons that I wanted to have you on that we wanted that we wanted to have you on was again because you can talk you can educate the people from the point of view of a police officer. So what are some what are some of the right what rights do citizens have when interacting with police? What demands must they comply with, and what can they refuse to do? Well, I mean they can. The the rights as far as what like in a what situation is it is it a situation where a police stop a citizen or is it a just a normal 
talk with the citizen, or, or what is it? Look, whichever one you, I mean, let edu educate us on all of it, I guess you could say, just any interactions with them, period. We, we can start off with a stop. So if a police stops okay. a citizen, okay. uh, what rights do they have with them? What what rights do they have during a police stop? Well, they have, they, they have so when you, in, the, in the stop, you know, the police officer has seven steps that they have to, and I don't know about my heart, so I don't have to. <laughs> Because I ain't done, I ain't done traffic stop in ten, in several, ten, eight years. But they have uh, several things that they, you know, they ask the person, and before either if they want the police officer want to write them a ticket or if they want to just give them a warning, it just depends on however that officer, whatever that officer wants to do at that time. Um, but the rights is basically, I mean, they can record, they can do, you know. <sighs> How can I say? I mean, if that's what's safe for them, I know a lot of people does the recording thing, but we will always tell people to, you know, have everything out. Uh, uh, can, you they, know, can they know. verbally berate a police officer? It is their right to curse out a police officer and verbally. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah I mean, it's, yeah, it's freedom of speech. You can you can curse. I, I would just, me personally, yeah, it'll hurt, it'll hurt me because I know the type of person I am. But that person don't know me. But he mm -hmm. just knows me as in a uniform. So in anybody that's in uniform, if the police, I don't care nothing about you, forget you, man. I'll, but that's okay. <laughs> I'm there, I'm only there to, to because you were speeding. I pulled you over because you were speeding. And I'm telling you why, you know, telling you everything why I pulled you over. This is what I need, your, you know, your, your license, your, your, you know, registration, all the insurance, and you might curse me out the whole time, but maybe some police officers can take that, you know, maybe some of them can't. I'm, I'm gonna take it. It's gonna hurt me because even to see a person just going off on me like, that. you know what I'm saying? So, I, I won't even get into that because once you get personal with that, then that's when things happen, maybe. You know what I'm saying? I'm only there because you were speeding and I write, I might, now that you're talking to me like that, I might most likely write you a ticket. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you're going back on me, man. Like, hey, I'm bro, you going 90 and a 50. Okay, you're, you're cursing me out. Like, brother, no, I, I'm going to probably tell you, be careful, you in the harm of other people, all elderly, people that might drive 40. Below the speed limit, you don't want to hurt nobody else. That's what I'm all about. I'm gonna educate you while I'm on this traffic stop. But mm -hmm. if you punch me out and you ain't you telling me that you don't even care about what even out what I gotta say. So I the only thing I have to, to talk to is my opinion. So <laughs> I was just okay, sir, you you have a nice day. He can curse me out all the way to to the courthouse. <laughs> I I it's nothing from I'm not finna do nothing else. That's it. I done what I was supposed to do. He cursed me out, and I'm like, man, I wish he was, and even in my car, I'm like, man, I wish there was something I could do to help this guy, man, to let him know, don't have to be like that, you know? Like I say, but, but it's, you, got, but, you have the freedom to speak. You have you the have freedom a, of speech, but you, you have the right to remain silent. You, <laughs> you have, you don't have the, you, that's when you're getting arrested and all that other stuff. He's not arrested. He's not detained. He's nothing. He just speaks. So the only thing, like he's mad at me because I stopped him, but what I'm saying is, is that I I can really just educate him and let him go, mm -hmm. and be like, brother, just be careful, man, because down the line you might get a ticket from somebody else. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But you cursing me out and everything, that's just gonna make me just like, okay, you know what, man, I right. you kind of asked for this ticket. Yeah. This is really what I wanted. I was just gonna educate you to be careful. Because you're going so fast, you're putting all these other people in harm's way. But you're going off on me. I'm like, man, what else is it for me to do? <laughs> he cursed me out. You know, he called me everything in the book. And, you know, so it's, it's like you said, it's freedom of speech. As long as that person don't, you know, I would say movements. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, I'm... I want to get home safe, just like that person want to get home safe. You know, I don't know what a person has in a vehicle. We we don't know who we pulling on. 
So if a person that gets stopped by the cops, more so you will hope they will already get all their stuff or know where their stuff is, their license, they they insurance. So whatever before I even get there, because we got to do a, a couple of couple of things before we get out of our car. So before we by, by the time I get there, he should have everything, and he don't have to go and get it. You feel me? What like? is what is that that's going on in the car, if you could tell me that? Because it sounds like it takes forever for these okay. cops to get out the car originally and come talk to you about the ticket. And like you say, a lot of times you, you'll get a warning and you'll be good to go, you know what I'm saying? But it feels, it's not a good feeling to just sit there for 10 minutes, you know what I'm saying, while the cop is sitting in the car and you're sitting well, there. Well, it depends. I mean, just every it's a, every person that you stop is different. You might have warrants, so I'm confirming the warrants. That take a while. That don't take two seconds. So I gotta say, hey, this this vehicle I pulled over got warrants, and I have to confirm the warrants. That's gonna take time. So then when I get over, there, I gotta call a, a secondary unit, hey, because this dude might run. You know what I'm saying? He got a warrant for. Uh, you know, whatever the case may be, he has it. He ain't trying to go to jail. So I call my secondary unit just for just for just in case. You know what I'm saying? Just for my my safety. I don't know what he's gonna do. He got warrants. Um. So a lot of that stuff takes time. It just depends on the situation. I I don't know. Everybody's situation is different when you pull a person over. Um. Like I said, for speeding, he can he can have everything can be clear. I gotta make sure that's him. I gotta make sure it comes back to, you know, is it is it him? Is the insurance, the cop can be looking at different things, and then whenever he get it and he grab his ticket book and he makes sure everything is in order and he get out and then he present it to the um you know to the person. So it's it's not like you stop a person, you get out the car. No, we have to make sure we have to put the stop, the location, where we at. Um, the person that we stop, all that stuff, we have to, because if it if it hits the fan, we gotta make sure we say too. Did you put this out? Where, where were you stopped? You just pulled this car out of of, of of nowhere. You don't have a location. You don't have a person that you stop. You don't have a license plate. So we can come back and get us too. <laughs> you know. So it just depends on the situation. So now, what about having to ID yourself? What I mean, let's say you walking around or you walking down the street, and an officer decides that they, I don't know, for whatever reason, want to ask you about your identification. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm really not, I'm not in that. That, that's not really my, um, my area. I never. Uh oh. Oh, they have to get us, man. They try to silence. <laughs> I'm trying to hold us down still, man. Uh, that boy's nah, still frozen, though. That ain't good. We experiencing some technical difficulties. Oh, we got yeah, when he comes back in, because I got a few more questions, man. I gotta, we, we definitely got to talk about some of the real stuff. But I also want to talk about the great things he's doing with his foundation. He kind of touched yep. in, he touched on most of it. But, um, you know, he, he has a foundation and he's doing great things with it as far as mentoring the kids. So I definitely want to talk to him about that. But um, so hopefully he can get uh, get his technical difficulties in order. Um, hey, it's not great. Thanks about the call. Yeah, somebody, something like that, text or something. But until then, man, y'all see what happened in Wakanda, though? What Wakanda. happened in Wakanda? Yeah, a.k.a. ATL. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so look, that was, look, that was, I was going to ask him something about that, too. So, uh, hopefully he can get, hopefully he can get those back, he can get his, his yeah, back in order. Yeah, I ATL Wakanda, that's why I call it Wakanda now. It go down. It go down. I got a yellow card. Come on. That's crazy. And then they burnt down the Wendy's. Man, they burnt that down. Bad. And then they got a camera going. I mean, pictures going down now. It was a white girl that did it. I know, right? They did what? They started the fire at Wendy's. Oh, did she? Well, that's who's starting all the fires. J. Prince want to know what's going on. I'm going to say, is she a part of Antifa? 
Yeah. Is she a part of hey, Antico? Hey, yo, like they keep trying to make everybody. Look, yeah, I'm a dang. There you go. There you go. Bro, yeah, I don't know how we lost it somehow, man. I then I saw I was like, y'all there? But anyway, now we good. I was like, man, what's going on? Uh, yeah. I, for, I forgot where we left off. Man. Don't even worry about it, man. We could just move on, brother. So, um, uh, because we were we were talking about police brutality, and you were talking about oh, I'm sorry, you were talking about uh, uh, identification. We were talking yeah, about the yeah, citizens' yeah. rights as far as if, if stopped and asked for identification. What are their rights when doing that? Yeah, I mean, they, you know, I, if they're stopped, uh, I mean, of course, if they stopped in a vehicle, they, that's what you're saying, door. No, I, I, I guess just period, man, any interaction, yeah. No, because it's different in a vehicle. If you're out and about, you don't have to do it, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you have to, in, a vehicle, in a vehicle, you have to, I mean, but it's just, I, like I said, it just all depends on, like, if I'm walking right now, police officer asking me for my ID, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the citizen have a right to ask, like, is anything going on? Like, is this a reason why you stopping me to ask me for my ID? Of course, you know what I'm saying? You ask, you ask questions, and, and hopefully that officer can tell you, okay, the reason why. You know what I'm saying? Because... You don't want to be, you know, you want to make sure you you okay. <laughs> you know, you like, what's going on? So, I mean, but at the same time, if it could be a suspicious person. It could be depending on what's going on in that area. And then I also want to see your ID. And if you credible and you okay and you ain't got nothing going on and you have your ID, yeah, yeah, I was like, I got my ID right here. But that's the simplest form. That's the easiest, simplest form. It's in, in, in me, if somebody was to stop me, if I go around right now and walk, it's dark. And I, I go around and walk around and some officer come up to me and ask me uh, for my ID. I would ask, like, is everything okay? That's just your first reaction. You're defensive. You want to know what's going on. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully I want that officer to, to let me know what's going on. You know, I want to know if, if it could be. Could be anything. Maybe I'd have seen a person they're looking for. Oh, oh, that guy just ran that way. So if he asked for it, I just present it to him here. This is my ID. This is me. He's checking, and then we go on about our business. I think sometimes people, they get into it to where they don't want to do that. Um, they question, they question, and no, I don't have to do it. I don't have to to show you my ID, and then that's when things start to happen. Conflict starts getting involved. You know, then it's a response and escalation. You know, it started out like this, and then it just gets big. You know what I'm saying? Where, uh, I mean, couldn't probably have to have, happen like that, but some people really just want to, don't want to show their ID. They're like, no, I'll wait for you to show me <laughs> You know why? All right. So, so now you talked about, you talked yeah. about the, the, yeah. Um, so how much training how much training do police officers actually have as far as de-escalating situations because you just said something right with uh, even when you do have somebody who is not compliant I, I, in my opinion and please let me know if I'm wrong I feel like uh, the police officer should, should have, has the burden of de-escalating the situation so how much training do officers actually have in de-escalating situations? We don't we we have um we have all types of training. De-escalation can be in that. It's not like a a a forty hour class of de-escalation. It's just part of what we already have with our training. And I, I couldn't tell you, I forgot. I have to go back and check on that to see how much training we had. But that's that's just part of of being a police officer of Houston, of Houston, um, we we always know how or we should know how to de-escalate a situation. You know what I'm saying? Every time I go to a scene and if it's hot, dealing with I'm working with homeless. If it's a homeless situation where my homeless is in a mental health crisis and he's way up there, I'm not gonna go way up there with him because I know that's gonna escalate the situation. You know I'm gonna bring down. I'm gonna talk just like I'm talking to y'all and see. 
okay, look, listen, you know, and try to get him to come down to me, you know what I'm saying, to where I'm at, and then we can kind of handle it, the situation from there. Um, but we have we have plenty of training. Um, just we 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 have great training, man. Um, Houston, I'm re- I'm really proud of our training and the stuff that they give us all the time uh, for for our courses we have to take. But de escalation is seriously officers you already know um, just off the top when they go to scenes. Because, you know, when you go to every scene, if you go to disturbance, everything is going to be on 100. Everything is going to be high. Whether you're dealing with a family matter, husband and wife, the situation, you're not going to go in there with no, hey, I ain't y'all, now I don't want to yell it. They way up there and you come in without that tone. No, that ain't how we do it. You separate them and you talk to them, okay? I know you, you frustrated. You got a lot going on. Just take a, take a second and just, just talk to me. Let me know what's going on. And that person, I tell you, every single time I was on the scene like that, they they bring it back down, and we can talk. And I never, I never had a problem with the escalation at all. Um, but we, we, like I said, we have we have training on it. Uh, okay. Uh, when a citizen. As for a supervisor, I mean, I, you know, I know you can only speak for yourself, uh, but I, I know you've seen maybe a few situations in that. Does that kind of, does that kind of get the officer's ego sometimes? So I, I never been in this. My badge, my, I never been in a situation like that with the, with the supervisor deal. Um, but, but it it probably for some officers I could probably say yeah because I feel like maybe <laughs> I'm up here you know handling my business and I it make it feel like he's not doing what he's supposed to do and you go above him so maybe I'm speaking on some officers I ain't saying that everybody but some officers might be like that like why I gotta get my supervisor kind of in their mind they're not telling them that but. I, you know, they're thinking that they're doing everything that they're supposed to do, but the citizen like, nah, man, let me get your supervisor. Well, you got to get them. You know, if a person asks for their for they supervisor, you have to get the supervisor. You can't sit there and chit-chat. Well, well why you? Why I got to get no if he asks for it? 92, 77, 77, ma'am, can you get a supervisor by my scene, please? And they run a supervisor. That's how it's supposed to be. So now we we've seen we've seen in recent weeks we've seen some horrific incidents with uh, Breonna Taylor and of course George Floyd and now just recently down there in Atlanta uh, a few days ago um, there's been some horrific some horrific incidents so is there a blue coat of silence man? <laughs> And if so, are you, is there a blue coat of silence? Let's just leave it at that for right now. Is there a blue coat of silence? Look, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> to be to be honest with you, I wouldn't, I don't, I hear stuff later on. Like, for instance, you saying the blue coat, uh, what else? Uh, other things that I hear, but I, we wasn't losing at the game. academy. I'm, I'm not there. I'm here. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you too. Got you. Okay. Okay. So during during academies and trainings and all that, I don't know. I to be honest with you, I don't know what that is. I wasn't. I me. I wasn't trained on no blue cones or, or or silence or nothing like that. I never was trained on that. You know, we wasn't taught that in the academy. You know, I hear about that all the time, like during just social media or or people, you know, uh, but I don't, I don't know what that is. I can assume what that might be, but that wasn't nothing I was taught. You know what I'm saying? But okay, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't be taught. Would have you? I guess what I've heard is that it is the, it is the they they tend to ostracize those who 
speak up or they tend to give poor uh, working conditions to those who speak up or worse, they get violent with those who speak up or those who speak up, put their name on paper and then they lose their job that happens to the offenders and then they have a bad working relationship with them. Have you ever experienced anything of that nature? Nah, I never, through the course of my years of, 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 of being a police officer, I never, thank God, I just never, I never experienced that. You know, I was always, I came up, man, I had great um, academy class was cool, the instructors was cool, uh, the, my patrol, um, uh, even... You know, and then to the homeless outreach, I just never experienced nothing like that before because everybody would seem to be focused. I was always around my class at that time was rookies. So we was always just happy to be out of the out of the academy, man, just trying to impact lives, you know, make differences and, and you know, just just do great things. And I, I had my, – my whole mind – was on just helping the community. When you got some, everybody is in a, a police house, of, like I said, for different reasons. And some of them wanted to do, you know, traffic stops. So, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Or I'm going to put people in jail. Or, I mean, that's part of being a police officer. You got to take care of your crime. You got to take care of protect and serve. That's what you, 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 oh, you, you put your hand up. That's good. Because you, you, you're trying to, to get the, the criminals, whoever's doing something that they're not supposed to do, you're trying to decrease that, get them off, the, you know, get them off the streets. But my mom, on the other hand, is trying to, I, I'm just trying to, you know, you know, make sure I can make a difference, you know, in the community wherever they put me. I, I wanted to make it known and make them com that community pretty much love officers. You know what I'm saying? If they were to as uh, or have a call, they went out to Thurgood. What out Thurgood? I want him to come to my scene. You know what I'm saying? I just, I always love that. You know, I love the happiness in people. Even though it can be a bad situation, you can turn around and make it a great situation, you know, just because of you. You know, you can, and I've done that so many times, man, and it, it makes my position just feel so great to even be a police officer. Doing all this stuff that's going on, I'm still at the same time happy I'm my officer. I still take pride in what I do because I guess you can say I'm doing what's right. Uh, okay. On uh, my question is does, well, you can only speak for HBD, but does HBD have a like peer, a peer mentoring type program where. Yes, we do. Yeah, we do. And that, that's excellent. Where, uh, you know, the, the older, more experienced cops can talk to these, the younger ones, so they aren't, when they come up into a situation, you hear everybody, uh, well, in a lot of these uh, unfortunate events and tragic events we have, a lot of them saying they fear for their lives. Yeah. Okay. Of course, of course, that those could be possible situations because, like you said, this is what you find up. With. But are there in uh, mentors in y'all's peer mentoring group where there's cops that take other cops that they see are a little bit shaky and a little bit timid or even scared on on their job? that can give insert a little bit more confidence to where they're doing a better job. Well you got they got their sergeant. You know, every every police officer has a sergeant. Yeah. You know, their sergeant actually sees that. They can talk to their sergeant. You know, their sergeant is their their go to guy. If they feel not on if they if, if they're uncomfortable by a neighborhood or a situation, the scene they've been through. See, uh, Sarge, man, I, that last scene I've been on, man, I, I ain't, I'm not going to store, but man, I was, I was scared, man. I'm, I'm, so at that time, you seeing your, your officer mentally is not all the way there. So that Sarge might say, well, look, you, you just saw this person get shot. I'll take that. 
because that's 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 kind of bad. You know, when a person sees another person get shot or anything, it's it can be traumatic. You right. know what I'm saying? So now that Sarge refers him to uh, uh, we have a peer support group, psychological team. You know, where officers can go to 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 get assistance with counseling. You know what I'm saying? In our own department. So those people can get referred to them, and then they can sit there and talk confidential. You don't have to talk to me. You talk to them and just let them know what you're going through, what happened. You know, if if you need days off, then they can give them, you know, uh, their sergeant or whatever, give them days off to, to, to you know, recuperate. Like a mental, mental, um, some mental break. And so you talk to that, you know, you talk to your superior, superior support team, your group, and then you tell them how you feel, and and then that we're always together. We're always. If you're not ready to come back to work, then hey, take some more days off. Talk to your counselor. Talk to your peer support group. Let them know how you're feeling. So we do have that. That's that's why I say I, I really love. I wish. I don't know about everybody else out there, but we have a great model of I think what a lot of police departments should have. I mean, like I said, I don't know what they have. But we have we have a lot, man. I mean, you you pretty much have the middle. You take care of the middle. You take care of the your own officers with peer support. You 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 just have, like I said, the homeless. You have we have so many divisions that take care of the different things that's needed in the community. Um, not saying that things can still go wrong. Nothing is perfect, but right. it's just awesome to see a police department with every single. Um, or or at least half of everything that people are asking for. You know what I'm saying? So right. it's, it's great, man. And if I wanted to right now, if I was to lead the homeless outreach team, I would go to peer support. I would go to that. I would go to that team because I love to help. I love to be that that officer to say, hey, man, come here, talk to me. What's going on? You know, and be that, that person there for them to, to go through that situation they've been through. Awesome. Very good. Awesome. No, I know. I mean, because you constantly, y'all are y'all are constantly having to combat uh, the public's distrust of you all, and and I know a lot of the distrust has to deal with the fact that uh, police officers are, are viewed to not be held accountable, right? And so it seems like oftentimes when when because they are, I I know for certain that there are a large majority of good officers out there. But when you do have bad instances like the the instances that we're talking about, it seems like officers are not vocal. Why don't more officers speak up about uh, bad policing? Yeah, I don't. You know, that's a good question, man. I I know. I know a lot of great officers, man. I can I can list them. I can't list them because there's so many of them, and it, it's it's hurt me because you know you do have a couple of apples that messed it up for everybody. I ain't never knew it was gonna be like this, you know. But at times like this now, um, I think people are trying or or doing the best they can to. Hold there, but I'm gonna tell you like this, y'all. Y'all don't even know it, man. That our department have more officers on officers complaints than citizens. So we we hold we hold each other combo <laughs> at all time. Like we have more people investigated just because an officer complained on another officer all the time, all the time. It's yeah, your wow is my wow, like wow. And I didn't know the stats are really high on officers and officers' complaints. You know what I'm saying? It's it's really really bad, and sad at it's sad too. But we are our department holds from statistics it holds officers on officers is leading <laughs> more than complaints from citizens. You know. So I mean that tells you right there that it's like man these guys here they they don't play you know if it's if it's anything that's going on they're complaining they're going to IED they complaining about this other house hey man he did this or he I don't like him because of this or he doing this it's like that all the time that's you know so we hold each other accountable in our department um 
out in the streets. I mean, I feel like if it's somebody, and, and now everybody, since, you know, all, a lot of this stuff is going on now, I think people are catching up. Maybe some people might have missed some stuff. Maybe some people saw some stuff that they probably thought that, hey, I should have maybe reported that or maybe I should have, but they let it go. But now it's to the point to where they can't because situations is just bad. You know what I'm saying? I'm not finna take it no more. I'm getting tired of my police department. We being on the news. You know what I'm saying? Like this is this is not good, man. This is really sad in the whole nation. And so I think it's good for everybody to hold each other accountable because everybody should do a great job, man. Everybody should treat people like human beings. You know, every call that I go on, my homeless people will fight for me. I had sometimes somebody came to one of my scenes and they said, man, y'all mess with third good. Y'all going to have to mess with me. I had, <laughs> I had like a whole, a whole group of homeless people was about to protect just, I don't know where it came from. I don't know if they was, I don't know what was wrong. They were just on some, that's my officer. And even, and even during the protest, they was the same way. They was like, I was the third good. If you need any letters written, I'll write them for you. I was like, no, you ain't. <laughs> I'm like, no, you ain't. Because it was it was a lot going on, and they feel bad. They feel they feel bad for a person that really has been doing for them. You know they got a home for you, man. So that's the position I'm in. <laughs> so already, yeah. So so, and I don't I don't mean keep harping on this. We gonna move on. Trust me. We going back to the big things that you were doing, man. But so. uh is, is it frowned upon <clears throat> for officers to speak out about reform? Why don't more officers speak out, speak out about leading reform? You know, we might have a, um, we have a, actually I'm a member of a, a, a African American police uh, officers uh, a member uh, group that I'm in actually and I think I think a lot of our officers probably uh, probably do. I'm not I'm not into the politics side of it, and they probably do. I, I I'm not sure, but I think it'll be I think it'll be me personally. I think it'll be cool. I think it'll be something that might can help you know the community, you know, and the officers. You you, you never want to lose community. I, I don't I don't man. Look, I've been in the community doing great things for ten years, ever since I've been a cop. And it feels so good to have community support, you know. And when you don't have that, it seems like you don't have nothing, man. You know, just imagine me having, remember all those kids I, I inspired and going, doing all this for them, and they just like forget Officer Thurgood. I don't have them. It's like I don't have nothing because that's who I'm, I'm here for them. <laughs> you know, so... You you always want that if the community won't reform and try to restructure and see what we can do to make it better, why not? You know, let's see what we can do. Let's go to the table. Get some head people. We all come together, chief, mayor, whatever, you know, legislation. Uh, let's all come together and see what we can come up with to make the community um, everywhere around the nation, make everybody, at least we got to start. At least we got something. You know what I'm saying? And and let's see what we can work with from there. You know, and the community might might be happy about that. I mean, it's not going to be 100% because it's never 100% perfect. But we can at least start somewhere with, with, with that and see how we can, you know, reform and see what, what happens. You know, I, I don't have a problem with it at all. So what are your thoughts on defund the police? Yeah, I mean, I I really don't. I just can't. Like I said, I don't think a couple of apples should spoil everybody. You know, police in Houston, we we have incidents, but it's not it's not nothing to where that happened. Something like, you know, I would say that. You know, that was that was sad. You know, when that happened, then it's like, you know, the whole world changed. 
I, I don't see that. And the only thing I, I would say is the, the media don't present good stuff that we do. You know what I'm saying? It never presents the, the, the great stuff that officers do on a daily basis. So I don't, I don't think that will be, um, I don't think that'll be fair, you know, to defund police officers, uh, everybody. If, it, if it's not a, I don't see a big reason to defund this department because of this, this department. You know, this department did this, so forget everybody get it. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that's fair. That's a horrible choice of words. I, so. Yeah, I think I think it's I think it's confusing anyway, because I mean a lot of it has to do with people wanting to lead the reform, but they just use it's semantics. They use the wrong word. Rather than defund, I think they really mean reform or deep or what about military or deep. Yeah, military, right? Oh, the what? The military. Oh, military. <laughs> yeah, it's demilitarized. Demilitarized. We. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you for joining. Yeah. Demilitarized. So what about okay, when what bad about, English is spoken? I come through. Uh, okay. Thank you, Ahmad. You're welcome. Uh, uh, so, what do you think about demilitarizing? I, I personally don't know all the I guess, tools that HPD has, but it was a crazy sight to see in Minnesota and in Washington. And I know you can't speak on them either, but uh, Minnesota and Washington and back then Ferguson as the actual military almost, the stuff that that's almost military uh, grade type things such as Humvees and tanks and, and stuff just to, I guess, control their citizens in their eyes. Do you think all that is really necessary or is that something that can be set back so that we can focus on community uh, resources and and whatnot? Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, man. I don't think all oh, that's necessary, man. I think we got the the local people. We're, we're, it starts locally. You know what I'm saying? It starts here. It starts at home. This is the people. Me, I, I don't mind. I do stuff for my kids all the time. Like, I don't. If it's something they want me to come out to and do something for them, I'm gonna be there because I'm for them. But I think locally is just where, sorry, excuse me, locally is where it all it all happens because locally is where your community is at. You local, where your community, local police is your your community, and so I don't think just like us. I mean, it, it, I mean, if it gets to that point to where. And I and I just you know it shouldn't have to where community is just out violent to a point to where we have to you know do stuff like that get military and stuff involved and sometimes we we you know you gotta understand too like how many people that you have in your department you know what I'm saying we don't we don't have but fifty maybe fifty five hundred people in our department right and you got. Sixty thousand marching <laughs> right. for the for the thing for my boy George at, at, at City Hall. So right. we hoping that pray God be with me, please don't get <laughs> on, on, on the on, on the street. Like, but everything was man, everything was good. So I'm just saying. So it's just if you need that, then you have to use your resources if you have to. But I don't think we should, you know. Um, sometimes most of the people that protest, it be other people that, that do stuff. That's there. They pay. I had somebody that paid my homeless. They told me that. I seen a couple of my homeless people in the pictures. I'm like, hey, y'all. What? <laughs> they're like, yeah, yeah, I was a teacher. That was him. I was like, that was that man. I said, I knew that was him, man. He was all po polo shirt. I'm like, <laughs> hey, he ain't even holding at all. And I said, I, I got something here when I see you. He ain't home. I said, I got. He said, Austin, they was like, Austin Tigger, you know, they they was trying to fly him to Washington. 
So you have people, exactly what I said. So you have people that just pay people to just ruin your city. So you would think it's your city ruining your city, but it's not our city. It's other people. And then so that's what makes it like, okay, that we can't, if it's to the point that we, we can't contain it, then we, we don't have, we need more resources. You know what I'm saying? But it shouldn't have to, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, yeah, that's great. Uh, it shouldn't, it shouldn't have to get that, to that point is what I'm saying. Right. Now, you were touching on a, on a, on a spot, uh, that that sparked that y'all don't have in proportion to people in the city. Y'all y'all are really a small y'all have a small amount of numbers. What do you think HPD can do to be more inviting for people to come join to actually be a part of their community? And and what we call police ourselves to join the forces, people in the community join the forces so that it's a more of y'all in in proportion to the population of the city and give the trust because it the trust of the community because there are more people of the community policing the community what do you think the hpd can do better to to have those numbers come in well we have a public affairs division and they go out to different colleges hbcus you name it and we recruit students from all these colleges you know what i'm saying but it's black colleges you name it um they they do a great job of going out to do what you're just saying. You know, that's all they do. They go out and recruit, you know what I'm saying, to bring people in, talk about what we do, and 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 hopefully they'll want to join the police department. We can't make nobody join the police department. You know what right. I'm saying? You, right. you can't make, uh, if you ask for African-American people to be here and they don't join, we can't, we, we can't. That's 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 not our deal. You know what right. I'm saying? We can't do. We only can do what we can. We can tell them all the great stuff that's going on. We can tell them, hey man, this is what we got. Hey, we got Officer Thurgood in the building over here. Man. You, know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, you know we can we can say all that. But if they don't want to be a cop and all the stuff that's going on now, it's tough, man. It's tough for a person to want to be a cop. Because right media is just it's just it's just making it look bad for all of us. You know, I had a kid, one of my mentees, uh, one of my kids, you know, and the reason why he want to be a cop is to be the change. Mm. He want to make a difference. You know what I'm saying? He's different. He's not like everybody. Mostly kids probably be like, will not want to be because of what's going on. The media, their parents probably telling them, you know, what's going on. Man, we getting it. I'm, man, I'm getting it, man. You know what I'm saying? To get trust back from my kids and just kids in general, it's hard. Right. To be a cop right now. Because right. every if you cut it on CNN, they probably talking about Atlanta PD. Y'all got it on CNN? You got it on CNN? Uh, not right now. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> they probably talking about Atlanta PD. So who watching that? Family, kids. Who watching the news? Families, kids. I'm not on the news doing great things. They ain't showing me. They ain't worried about Officer Third Good and his good deeds right now. <laughs> you know, they try to they try to get this other stuff out because that's right. what the ratings are high. It's it's important. So what you thinking is that well, who's influent? Who who is that influencing? Yeah. So I mean, we have like I said, we have a, a a a unit to go out there and do that, but it's tough on that unit right now, man. You know, they're going and doing everything they can, whatever it takes to say, hey, you know, to bring the joy back in policing and stuff like that. But when you got movements and stuff like that going on, man, it's just hard. When you go, when you leave, they're going back home. Right. It's, it's, it's a tough situation right now. But we do have a division that go out and recruit all these people and try to get them to join our department. And they do... 
Man, they do a fantastic job, man. They they're awesome. Very good. Very good. So now you are doing great things, man. And so let's talk about it. The Third Good Deeds Foundation, man. What is that and what motivated you to create it? I I started that, man, like I was saying, working at Juvenile uh the Juvenile Detention Center from two thousand six to two thousand ten. And I had a lot of kids coming in, even my even my cousin, my little cousin, he um praying for him and you um, free 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 my man Dita, man. Um it was one of them that came in there and they just kept coming back. So while you in there as a DO a detention officer, you sitting in that unit with those kids and y'all talking about life. Y'all talking about you asking them why you in here, what you did, you know, you joking with what you do, you know what I'm saying? And you trying to see what they've done and you at the same time, if you have passion for those kids, you're gonna ask them, What what are your goals? Like what are you trying to do? Like to, 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 to get across from making these mistakes, okay, okay, we made these mistakes, we're here, but what are we going to do next? You know what I'm saying? So talking to kids like this for four years, I just got, in my mind, I'm like, I have to figure out something. I'm praying, God, help me to, to, to at least be a, a vessel to stop. Maybe not all of them, but some of them from coming in here. And I fill out an application. I said, I'll just join the police department. I'll see what I can do. Fill out the application. I, I got on. Uh, did two, uh, the spent two years in the police department. The third year, I started my foundation. We did consistently outreach. I did outreach to, 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 because a lot of kids was not liking, there was more violence. So I said, let me, let me, let me get a team that can go out there in the community and serve others, see what other people look like. See what poverty look like. See what youth that don't have look like. See what elderly folks that can't do for themselves look like. Maybe they can have some type of love. Maybe they can have some type of, okay, these people can't do it. They, You know, I serve 100 people today. I feel good about myself. This is awesome. And instead of the news and everybody saying about bad, these kids doing bad, we got kids that's doing good. You don't even know what they've done. They could have been... A felony. One of my kids in my group can be a felony. But you wouldn't know that. You know they're doing great things. You know that they're helping somebody. You know they're impacting somebody's life. So that's what I was dealing with. So I had 20-some kids, and that's all we did consistently. And five, four of my kids just graduated from my outreach group. They graduated. Just not... Uh, Look at my look at their good deeds page, and you see four of my kids. One just graduated. I did something for him. We um, posted him yet uh, today. He just graduated from Spring High School from my mentoring program. Yeah. I reach and I got a mentor. I got five kids that graduated going to college. Very um, good. You know what I'm saying? And so, that, man. Yeah, I'm already, bro. I'm so excited about that, man. So that's that's why. I'm a police officer. That's why I became that, because I wanted to make a difference. God put that on my heart. He had a path for me already, and I've done it. I accomplished a lot of goals. You know what I'm saying? I didn't, I didn't, I've, I've been faithful and stayed on the path even when things was bad. When I ain't had no money, no support, when I had to use my own money, back on my credit cards was all backed up because I'm paying for events, kids, you know, just all types of stuff, man. It all paid off. You know what I'm saying? So I'm proud. I, I can go through the things that's going on. I tell people all the time. I know this lady today, she was like, Sheldon, how you doing? I, last time I seen you, you was on the news, you know, doing something great for the kids. I say, she asked me how I was doing. I say, I'm awesome. I'm great. My kids just graduated uh, yesterday. <laughs> I'm good. Great. I don't, when, when things are going bad, I'm I'm going with, with, with uh, Michelle say when, when things go low, I go high. <laughs> right, right. I'm going, right, right. I'm going baby, we, we good. We good. We graduating over here. I mean, yeah, uh, I have, yeah, devil, the devil is working. But at the same time, God is too. So I'm, I'm okay. I'm good. Just keep us in your prayers and... And I'm still continuing to bless my kids and com to bless the community, my homeless people. And and I mean, I'm I hopefully I can 
if, if it's meant for me to change the world, and if I can, I'll change it. You know, if God Absolutely. want me to do that, that's what I'll do. Absolutely. So now, now you also, you just celebrated your birthday last week, man. And so happy birthday, happy belated birthday. And, and uh, uh, one of one, one, one of the way one of the ways you celebrated was taking a picture with some of the kids you met so in front of the uh, uh, a George Floyd memorial yeah. uh, uh, mural. Why yeah. did you decide to do that? I I gave my I had to work that day. You know, usually every year I do something big for my birthday, but that day I dedicated it to my kids. You know, I dedicated my birthday to them because you gotta understand everything they didn't been through. No prom, no graduation, no school, being in the house with their parents, they like, oh man, I gotta I gotta get out of here. And everything that they was going through, I felt that. You know, so I'm thinking like I just want to dedicate my birthday to them. And I just took pictures with them before I had to go to work. Um, dedicated it to 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 George Floyd because of what he done and impacted the community. And the kids was was very excited to take a picture in front of him because to him to them he was a hero. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So what's next? What's next for Third Good Deeds, man? What's next? What's next on the agenda? What's next in the plan? What 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 what, what y'all got planned for the rest of twenty twenty and then twenty twenty one and beyond? It's you know twenty twenty is um. The COVID, man, the COVID is messing it up for a lot. And, you know, it's it's okay because of, you know, social distancing and wearing your mask. So it's, it's, we, we have virtual, we try to do virtual things with the kids. Um, as far as outreach, it's kind of tough because you don't want all those kids to go um, and be with people that might have COVID. So that, that kind of, that kind of hurt us a lot, but mentoring and, 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 you know, we st I still be inspired and impacted and trying to figure out ways to to help those guys for college. We just did, I just, we just sponsored um, 30 some kids for high school. And it was, all, this was all virtually, you know what I'm saying? We did drawings, we did, my organization did drawings for these kids and we gave them money. They got donated money, they got donated gift baskets. You know, these kids was getting, all types of stuff. It was fun, man. You know, so that was that was a great thing we just did, and and so I'm always looking to do something. If people tell you, they know I'm always up to something because I'm always trying to, you know, impact and make kids happy. You know, so I, I'm I'm trying to get some some stuff. I got some stuff up my sleeve, so we'll see. So now, how can how can people contribute to to Third Good Deeds? How can they how can they donate or, or get in contact with you or anything they want to do to contribute to 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 continue the work that you're doing? Man, Third Good Deeds, T H E R A G O O D D E E D S. I got to spell it because they be thinking it's like Third Good Marshall, but it's not spelled the same. You can go on that website. Um, you can contribute on there. You can message us if you want to volunteer. If you got any inputs, if you got any people you want to get mentored, if you got any kids that's looking for a mentor, we 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 have that. Um, you know, if you want to help, if you want to donate, like I said, you you can just message or you can go on our website. Either either or I get in touch with or or somebody get in touch with that person. Absolutely, man. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure, brother. I appreciate you, man, for coming on, not only schooling us, but I told you, man, I, I'm so proud of what you're doing that you basically, I don't know if you realize it or not, but you have laid down a challenge to me. I make sure that I highlighted you to show everybody the great things that you are doing. Um, and, and let everybody know 
of the yes, there are some great police officers out here. I know one of them personally, man, and I appreciate you coming on, man. So before you get out of here, I know you just told how they can get in touch with the foundation, but let them know how they can get in touch with you, uh, um, get put your social media, anything, and how they can contact you if they want to about whatever, man. Yeah, everybody usually contact me on my social media. That's how I'm able to get back with you guys at Third Good Deeds. It's Third Good Deeds everything, website, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, so it ain't no different. Twitter, it's Third Good Deeds on Twitter, so you can do all of it. You got to spell it right, though. It's T-A-T-E-S. Nigga, dog, dog, you feel Hey, basically you spell it right. T-H-E-R-A-G-O-O-D. And then D's, D E E D S. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. It's all on there. We do. Just send me a message. Absolutely. I mean, check, but check out what we do. You know, check out everything that's going on and, and hopefully you like it, man. You know, hopefully you got us to like what we're doing and we we just trying to impact um the youth. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm all about. Absolutely, man. That's Sheldon Thurgood of HPD and the Third Good Deeds Foundation, man. Um, y'all be sure to check it out. Be sure to follow him. Be sure to support that. Uh, and thank you for watching. I am my brother's keeper. Um, be sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And check out our website, the garage, apt.com, man. Third good, I appreciate you, brother. It's been a blessing, man. I appreciate you for real, man. Thank you can stay man. There, man. Love love man. Absolutely. Love you again, man. Yeah, love you. Absolutely. Man. For sure. And to the rest of y'all, man, y'all be good. If you can't be good, then be good at it, man. Until next time, we'll holler at y'all. Follow the Garage Department on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Yeah. Tweet, photo, video. Let me share some real quick. Follow me on social media. And subscribe to the Garage Department Radio on YouTube.